This is our planet, Earth, floating in the vastness of space, where we are born and will one day die. We've all seen the map of Earth countless times, but have you ever noticed something strange? If you look closely, you will realize that most of Earth's landmasses are in the Northern Hemisphere, while the Southern Hemisphere seems relatively empty. Why is this? Out of the seven continents, five are mostly in the Northern Hemisphere, while only two are in the Southern Hemisphere. But why is this? What scientific reason explains this imbalance? Our story starts about 4.6 billion years ago. At that time, the Sun was still very young, and the leftover matter from the nebula that formed it was swirling around at high speeds. Over time, this material began clumping together, forming the planets, including Earth. Earth began as a rocky core, pulling in nearby matter through gravity. For millions of years, asteroids collided with Earth, bringing not only metals like gold and iron but also water, which formed our oceans. It's in these oceans that life began. For billion years ago, Earth looked quite different. The planet was mostly covered by one giant ocean, but things were changing beneath the surface. The heat from Earth's mantle caused the planet's crust to crack into several pieces, forming what we know as tectonic plates. These plates began to shift and collide, leading to the creation of land masses. About three billion years ago, the process called subduction began. This is when one tectonic plate sinks beneath another, pushing molten rock up toward the surface. Over time, this formed small islands that eventually grew into larger land masses, resulting in Earth's first supercontinent, known as Columbia or Nuna. At that time, Earth was home to one giant landmass surrounded by one vast ocean. But tectonic plates are always moving, and over millions of years, Columbia broke apart. This cycle of breaking and forming supercontinents continued throughout Earth's history. The most recent supercontinent, Pangaea, existed around 300 million years ago. It covered half the Earth and was surrounded by a single ocean called Panthalassa. But why did most of Earth's land end up in the Northern Hemisphere after Pangaea broke apart? Some suggest that Earth's fast rotation caused the continents to shift upwards, similar to how liquid in a spinning juicer moves outward. However, the real answer lies in tectonic plate movement. The plates are constantly shifting, and we are witnessing just one part of Earth's long geological story. In the past, most land may have been in the Southern Hemisphere, and in the future, it could be there again. In fact, scientists predict that in about 100 million years, all the continents will come together once more, forming a new supercontinent called Pangaea Proxima. Until then, we are living in a time when most of the continents are in the Northern Hemisphere, and this is just one snapshot in Earth's long and ever-changing history. This movement of tectonic plates has shaped not only Earth's geography, but also its life. When Pangaea existed, Life evolved and adapted to changing environments. The breaking of the supercontinent led to new challenges and opportunities for life, ultimately shaping the world we live in today. For humans, this movement was particularly important. The Great Rift Valley in Africa, created by tectonic plate movement, was the birthplace of early humans, and our brains evolved there, allowing us to become the intelligent species we are today. So, while the map of Earth may seem static, it's really part of a much larger story that continues to unfold. I hope this video helped you understand why most of Earth's land is in the Northern Hemisphere and that you learned something new. If you did, please like this video, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an episode. See you next time.